Hello friends and welcome back. Welcome back to another video. Uh, welcome back to our little coffee club. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Today we're gonna continue uh, playing around with uh, the onesie Presso K Plus model and the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. So we left things off last time we were, we were testing them. We were comparing them as far as uh, Espresso. And one thing that has become very apparent to me is the fact that the K Plus is producing a lot less fines as time has gone by. Okay, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, I believe that grinder is producing a lot more fines than the K Plus. When I first bought the K Plus, you guys know I bought it for uh, mainly for pullovers and to work with it in the mornings. Uh, really, I wake up really early, I make my pullovers in the morning and I don't wanna be making noise. So I got me a hand grinder and I think I chose the perfect one, I really love it. Uh, that thing has been bulletproof, it's super nice to use, it's a pleasure to, to use. You can, uh, you can grind really fine for espresso, uh, it has plenty of adjustability. You can grind coarse for pullovers, as coarse as you like. You can use it for French press and I believe all the way down to Turkish coffee. Um, maybe I don't recommend that because it'll probably <laughs> take you forever to grind when you're grinding fine like dust, the way you have to do uh, Turkish coffee. As a matter of fact, one of these days we'll make, we'll make some Turkish coffee. But today we're gonna compare the K Plus and the Breville Smart Grinder Pro uh, in pour overs. Because I think for me, being an average consumer and not having the most developed palate or the best taste buds in the world, let's say, I think for me, it's gonna be a lot easier to maybe taste a difference when doing filtered coffee or doing pour overs. So today we're gonna make a, a couple of brews on the origami and we're gonna grind with the K plus, we're gonna grind with the Breville Smart Grinder. We're gonna shoot for a ratio of one to 15. So I'm gonna grind 20 grams of coffee and look to get out 300 grams. That is the ratio that I always do in the mornings. It's what I'm very familiar with. So I would rather do like a smaller amount of coffee right now, but just because I don't have the practice, I don't wanna mess that up and then I get it all wrong. So I'm gonna do my usual workflow, okay? I do three pours. Uh, I use the Fellow Stag EKG kettle, which is really a pleasure to use. It's wonderful. I've talked about it in many videos. I'm gonna hold the water temperature at 97. That works perfectly fine for, we're gonna do this coffee, the Dunkin' Donuts coffee that I'm always playing around with. It's something that I'm extremely familiar with. It's something that I use all the time. So I am a lot more likely to see a difference using something I'm very familiar with. Uh, this I have out because I wanted to, I didn't wanna forget mentioning, um, I, I had talked in a previous video about uh, this coffee here, Carrie recommended it. Uh, Carrie, hello. <laughs> and she recommended that coffee and she enjoyed it as straight espresso shots the best. And so did I. So when I first brewed it, I brewed it as a, as a straight espresso shot and I thought it was wonderful. Then I started dialing it in uh, uh, for pour overs and I, was, and I was able to get the best results uh, when I used the tricklet. Okay, this coffee is hard to extract. It's a light roast. It needs a long contact time between the coffee grounds and the hot water in order to extract it. Okay, so you wanna grind it finer than you would normally do like a medium roast you wanna have a longer brew time and you wanna use a hotter temperature water, okay? So the temperature of the water with, for this needs to be really close to boiling, either boiling or very close to it. And this one as well, this one you can brew at, at boiling, although I think it's best just below boiling, don't get it, um, don't get it quite to boiling, just stay just under that, I think you'll get the best results. But both, this is a medium roast, but it's quite light, as far as mediums go, this is quite light. It has a very high acidity, and for you to get the sweetness out of it, you kind of want to brew it hot and kind of long to get that sweetness out and to kind of cut some of the acidity. So it just depends what you like or what you want to go for on that particular day. So, but I had talked to you guys that I was going to try to reach out to Carrie and see if I could get the, her uh, brew time for this shot as far as espresso, so how long it was, it, her shot was taking to pull. So you guys saw the last time I tried it, I think it was a 37 second shot on the Brevo infuser and it was perfect. It was, to me, it was, it was great. So I reached out to her and she left me a comment 
So there's really no way to translate her brew time to mine because the workflow is so different that <laughs> there's just no way. Carries on another level. Uh, I'm just a rookie, okay? I have like kind of beginner kind of stuff. And I think Carrie, I think she said she's using also the niche. So as far as the grinder is, you know, the same grinder. So the coffee was the same coffee, but now her espresso machine is something on a different level. Uh, she's using flow control. If you guys know um, a lot about espresso, you know that with flow control, the kind of timing goes out the window because if, with flow control, you can do like a really long pre-infusion at um, a very low pressures and kind of extend your pre-infusion for a long time. Some people get it as high as 20, 30 seconds before they even start brewing the shot at full pressure. And when you go to full pressure, you can control the pressure. You can go to a nine bar, but you can also do seven bar. You can do six bar. So uh, a lot of people like brewing the shots when you got flow control for a lot longer time. And that is also the case as to what Carrie is doing. So there's really no way for me to translate that to my machine that doesn't have flow control. As soon as you hit that button, well, you can do pre-infusion and it allows you to do pre-infusion for a few seconds. I always do like a five, six second pre-infusion. I think that's about, you know, I don't know if you keep holding the button, if it, I think eventually it probably ramps up to full pressure. I don't know, comment below. Let me know if the Brevo Infuser and the Barista Express, if you can control pre-infusion for as long as you want. I don't think so. I've never read into that, but I have a feeling there's a limit as far as timing. I always do five, six seconds, then I let go of the button and the machine goes to full pressure. And on that machine, I, I don't even think it's nine bars, probably higher than that. So the controls are so different. Carrie's workflow is so much more advanced. She's using puck screen, she's using the puck filter, uh, she, she's doing the flow control. It's just so many things, there's no way to translate it to mine. Let's just say that at 37 seconds with a regular machine, you know, kind of entry level stuff, you're gonna get a nice shot. Okay, let's just leave it at that. And this coffee, you guys know that if I'm gonna mix it with milk, I like to be more towards like the 45, 50 seconds, okay? If I'm just gonna have the straight shot, well, 35 seconds, 40 seconds, that works just fine. Depends on how much acidity you wanna get and how much brightness you wanna get out of it. Today, we're gonna be doing a pour over. So for pour over, I usually look for around three and a half to four minutes. Today, I'm gonna be looking for that three and a half minute mark. As far as grinding on the Breville Smart Grinder to achieve that, I have no idea. So <laughs> I think I have it set for 40, uh, as far as how coarse. The Breville Smart Grinder does allow you to go coarse for you to do, for you to do filtered coffee, for you to do French press and things like that. The grinder that comes in the Breville Barista Express, it's only for espresso. So you have a lot less control. So I have the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, so I can go coarse. I have it set at 40. I don't know if that'll give me like three and a half minutes. I think I'm pour over. There's a lot more flexibility as far as uh, tiny. You don't have to be that exact. In espresso, a difference of 20 seconds is a totally different shot. I mean, that is, <laughs> there's nowhere near. And filtered, 20 seconds is not that much of a difference. Um, it is, it is, but it's not that much. I think I would really love to have it within like 10 seconds of each other. I think that's close enough. In filtered, I think five seconds, it's already like pretty much the same. 10 seconds is very, very close. And maybe even as much as 20 seconds. But we'll see what we get today. I'm gonna shoot for three and a half minutes. I'm gonna grind with the Breville Smart Grinder Pro first to see what kind of timing we get. We might have to redo it again. Hopefully on the second try, we'll get it right. Maybe even hopefully on the first try, we get it right. As far as the K Plus, I have a lot more experience. I think that uh, depending on what I get on the Breville Smart Grinder, I might be able to make a small adjustment on the K Plus. Usually I'm at six, but I think depending on what I get on the Breville Smart Grinder, I'll be able to get close to it with the K Plus. I just don't wanna be like over four minutes. I don't wanna be below three and a half minutes. So. Somewhere in there, I'm fine with it. And then I'll try to match it with the K Plus as close as possible and give it a taste test and see if an average consumer like myself can tell any difference on the grinders in filtered coffee. Maybe, I think filtered coffee, I have a better chance of noticing something 
than an espresso. You guys saw last time, if you wanna see that video, uh, I think it should be the video right before this one. Yeah, I think it's the video right before this one where, um, you know, I tried grinding with both grinders and comparing them in espresso and, you know, an average guy like me, I don't think you could, you could do that. The, the shots were not even exactly the same and it was already so similar that it's just too close to call. There were very small differences. Maybe those small differences are always there. I, I don't know. This is just something we learn together. We keep uh, exploring this whole thing and keep experimenting. And hopefully I'll keep you guys company here for a few more minutes. I will chit chat a little more. We'll pour, make some coffee and taste them and chit chat a little bit. I'll keep you company for a little while. I hope you guys are brewing something tasty and let's brew some coffee. You know, I used to think that the whole thing about seasoning burrs, that that was all kind of like a myth. <laughs> but you know, the more experience I keep building in this whole coffee thing, uh, I do notice that a lot of the things that you don't really realize that they're gonna be meaningful, you know, they turn out to be meaningful. Like the whole thing about uh, seasoning burrs, it is very easy to tell that the K plus now, the way it's grinding now, it's a, it's a pretty big difference than when I first bought it. Okay, it definitely produces less fines, okay? Before, when I first bought it, any kind of agitation that I did, any kind of agitation that I did to, to the brewer, it would make a huge difference in the brew time. But now, as time goes by, I can do a bunch of agitation and it doesn't, it still slows it down, but not to the point like before, it pretty much you could get it to stall very easily. If you did a lot of agitation, your brew would just stop brewing, okay? So that's because of all the fines start to, you know, they start to travel down to, to, the, to the bottom of, of your filter and it clogs it up and it stalls your brew, okay? But what's happening now is that, you know, you can do, I can do a whole bunch of agitation to whatever brewer I'm using and it won't stop. It will slow down a bit, but definitely nowhere near what it used to uh, stall before. So I know that the K plus from my three grinders is the one that produces the least amount of fines. Now the niche, it's possible that it still needs to be um, seasoned further. I haven't had it a whole bunch of time. I basically use it just for espresso on the weekends and I haven't used it a whole bunch. The K Plus and the Breville Smart Grinder should be fully seasoned. I've used them a whole bunch, okay? And I know for sure on the K Plus, you can tell a big difference as to how it's brewing now, the amount of fines that it's producing now and what used to happen when I first bought it. So I'm gonna start with the Breville Smart Grinder, which I believe it produces, it produces a lot more fines. My understanding is, comment below if maybe I'm wrong on this, but uh, my understanding is, from everything I've learned, is that when you have less fines, the clarity in the cup and your tasting notes will be a lot more apparent, okay? The, uh, but what happens is that you lose some of that thickness and some of that uh, you know, like some of the nice part of espresso, which I, I like the espresso to be nice and thick and, and gooey. You lose some of that if you don't have the fines. So it's kind of like a give and take. I might be able to taste some difference. We'll see. I'm going to start by dosing out the 20 grams and then we'll grind on the Breville Smart Grinder and see what happens. Okay, 19.9. One more bean. 20. <laughs> Well, we're in between 20 and 20.1. We'll see what we get up. Okay, so there you see we're at 20 grams. Here's the, the smart grinder. All right, I'm pretty sure you could see it there. I'm set at 40, 20 seconds. Let's see how this goes. All right, 20 seconds was not enough. All right, took about 30 seconds. I'll just let it run. Make sure we got everything. All right, let's see if we got 20 grams. 
we're at 19.6. Okay, wow. All right, let's see. Okay, I had to put a couple more beans in there. Let's see. All right, so obviously now we're over. <laughs> Okay, so I just took a little bit out with the spoon. We're at uh, we're at 20. All right, so we're right at 20. We're good to go. Let's start by folding the filter. Okay, and let's rinse it. So rinsing the filter, uh, sometimes you have like a little papery taste, you know. To me, it's not super noticeable, but there is a small difference, but you kind of have to uh, just taste it with the straight water. Once you brew the coffee in there, it's very hard to notice. Uh, there could be a small difference. But one thing it does do, it makes it stick all to the, to the brewer plus it helps to heat everything up everything starts to get hot oh yeah so one thing I forgot to mention and to tell you guys is I'm gonna be brewing into I'm gonna put the coffee in these mugs like I did last time I'm cooking them again <laughs> and uh, I again I just have hot water in this pan and it's on the stove to to keep the water hot and to keep these things up to temperature so when I taste them the coffee will be a very similar uh, temperature both and that technique last time worked very well extremely well so I'm gonna do it again just to keep the the coffees as close to each other as possible okay so we have our 20 grams make sure there's no water in here okay we're good Let's distribute this, distribute it around. You guys know I always use a chopstick. This is just a regular wooden chopstick to kind of make that divot where I start pouring into. You know, this coffee, I don't know, it looks pretty fine. And it's at 40, so, but we'll see. As long as we're somewhere around three and a half minutes, I'll be happy with that. Okay, so my water temperature is ready. I have my coffee in here. I have my divot to pour into my first 100 grams. Okay, tear the scale and start the timer. Okay, let's go the first 100 grams right into the middle. And then we go around until we get to 100 grams. Okay, close enough, I'm at 97. I don't do any agitation at first. Okay, I'm trying to get a close-up for you guys with the phone. Okay, this coffee's still degassing. So, I usually wait about 30 seconds today. I went a little over because I'm doing this thing with the phone and the whole works here, so. All right, now we're gonna go around and we're gonna go up to, we're gonna try to go up to 200 grams. Okay, so we're right there. That's the second pour. Let me put the phone down because this time I do some agitation. On my second pour, I always do a little agitation. All right, so I did a little agitation. And the brew slowed down quite, quite a bit. You see, this is what I'm telling you guys. With the smart grinder, you get a lot of fines. Look at how much it slowed down. It's barely trickling now. You know, but if you don't do any agitation, you run the chance of the coffee not being, uh, you know, all of it being saturated and you're not extracting everything. So some agitation is always good, you know, but I'm going to do agitation only once. Hopefully it's not going to slow down anymore. I'm going to start with the third pour. Okay, we're two and a half minutes in already, guys, and I'm just starting with my third pour. Okay, wash everything off the sides good. Get it to 300, okay. All right, 
304. Okay, 304 grams. We are two minutes and 45 seconds into the process. Let me get you guys another close up. We have a stream going, a steady little stream. It's not, it's still, this is gonna run kind of long. As long as I match it with the K plus, because what we're looking for is the, the difference, you know, that's what we want to see. How much difference. If we could taste any difference, <laughs> maybe no. But wow, with that amount of ag agitation with the K plus, I mean, I do this every morning, every single morning. That amount of agitation with the K plus, the brew would have slowed down, but very little. And here is a huge difference from what the first pour was to what the second pour ended up being is it's totally different. So, all right, let's see. We're going to run long. So this is definitely not going to finish in four minutes. So let's see when it does finish. <laughs> okay. Obviously I'm going to have to edit some of this process here. Or <laughs> it's just not going to be a lot of fun for you guys. But um, basically we are four minutes and 20 seconds into it. And it's getting close, but we still have a little bit more to go. All right, you know what? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. Do, we're gonna have to try again. This is just way too long. We're five minutes into this, and usually this is a process that I like to get about three and a half to four minutes. So we're a whole entire minute over that. We're gonna have to do another one. Okay, so I'm almost set to go again here. Let's uh, let's get another filter ready. Uh, I set the smart grinder at 50, so I went up by 10 clicks. That sounds like a lot, but guys, we're not dealing with espresso here. And I tasted the coffee, by the way, and it was it was great. It was uh, sweet, very sweet. It didn't have any bitterness. Uh, this coffee is hard to over extract. It's just it's it's light. It, um, you know, if, if you know, you know. <laughs> like I say. When you are doing brews here on the origami, you have a lot of flexibility with this coffee. Uh, you know, right now there was, you know, there was very little acidity left to what I'm used to, to what I usually like. And so, yeah, but it was still sweet. It was not overextracted. There was no bitterness. It was great. A lot of you guys, as a matter of fact, you might like that a lot better. If it depends if you like acidity or not. But at that point, just get a different coffee. <laughs> okay, let's rinse the filter again. But yeah, if you want to brew that coffee, you want to get it sweeter, again, your brew time needs to be longer. What I had right now had very little acidity left. Okay, let's get rid of this water. Okay, so we rinsed out the filter. Let's weigh out our 20 grams. Okay. All right, 20 grams. Let's grind it. Let's try that Breville Smart Grinder again. All right, it took less than 30 seconds this time, so obviously it's coarser, and I could see from the looks of it, I could tell last time that it was quite fine. This is a lot closer to what it should be like. 19.9, so there's no reason to do any adjusting this time. We're good to go. Okay, so I emptied this already. Yes, I did. <laughs> Guys, gotta always check. Sometimes you brew right into that other additional water and you're gonna get a diluted cup. Okay. Okay, I think this time we're gonna be in business. Make that divot. If you guys have been watching the videos, you already know what that looks like, but let me get you a little clip with the foam. All right, so you see it there. We're gonna pour right into that. As soon as we fill that up, then we start going around the sides. Uh, let's tear the scale. Start the time. Okay. I'll try to film this for you guys. Okay, so right into the divot, then we go around. You can see it degassing. Coffee's still quite fresh. And we do our first 100 grams. And that should take usually about 30 seconds before the second pour.
All right, so 30 seconds, let's go. Second pour. Okay, around the sides until we get to 200 grams. Okay. I'm gonna do less agitation this time. Because you guys could see the difference is drastic. That agitation is nothing for the K plus. So obviously there's a lot more fines here with the Breville Smart Grinder. Hence, that's why maybe I'm getting like the thickness in the shots. Uh, and maybe I'll be able to taste a little bit of a difference. We'll see today. As far as with, we haven't done the test as far as with pour overs. With espresso, you can definitely see the difference as far as the texture. But as far as flavor, the taste, it's almost identical to me. Okay, we're gonna go with the third pour. Just wash everything off the sides. Okay, and go up to 300 grams. Okay, a little more, there we go. Okay, so we got it spot on on the 300 grams. We are two minutes into the process, but I think this time for sure we'll be somewhere around three and a half minutes. I don't think we'll be a lot longer than that. It's still dripping, but it's dripping quite fast and there's not a lot of water left. So I think, I think we'll be close. So on the smart grinder, if you want to do this process, something like what I'm doing, obviously you're, depending on your coffee, it might have to be a different setting, but you could see there, I am at a grind size 50 and it took about 30 seconds to grind the 20 grams. We're getting 300 grams of water out in three pours, each one of 100 grams. The first one into the divot, then go around the sides until you get to 100. On your second pour, do some agitation. And on your third pour, just wash everything off the sides and get everything into the, into the metal. You should end up with a flat bed of coffee. Okay, so 315, 15 more seconds, perhaps. I wanted like three and a half minutes, so I think we're gonna be somewhere in there. Really close. Okay, that's three minutes and 30 seconds. It's barely dripping, look at that, barely dripping. It's dry on top. So we can say we got it in about three and a half minutes, okay, that's close enough. Okay, I wanna get it here under this lighting so you guys could see how nice and flat this bed of coffee is. It's not muddy at all. This is picture perfect. This is what you want uh, when you do a pour over with the, with the origami. The mugs are still sitting here in the hot water. So this will hold the temperature while we get the, our, second, our second brew ready on the K Plus. Okay, so you guys have seen me do this process on the K Plus so many times already, but we are set on six. See the little red dot? right over the six, that's 60 clicks on the K plus. And with this, I should be between the, some agitation here and there, I should be able to control it to get somewhere similar around three and a half minutes. So let's go ahead and dose out our 20 grams for the K plus. You know, today I'm gonna do something that I never do. Oh, and by the way, I keep forgetting to like use the little shaker thing. <laughs> we'll eventually get to that and we'll pull some shots using that little shaker. It'd be a lot better if I had a 58 millimeter uh, put a filter to use that but one day we'll, we'll get around to it hopefully i'll have my 58 millimeter soon but okay so today i'm gonna check retention for you guys on the k plus which i never do because it's like what's the point but let's see what happens okay so that's the catch cup tear it to zero just weigh out the 20 grams okay All right, 20 grams. We're in between 20 and 20.1. Okay, so let's see what we get out. Okay, this should take me pretty much the same amount of time as it did on the Smart Grinder. It should take me about 30 seconds. At the end, just tap it a couple times. Make sure this is loose so everything went through, okay? All right, let's see. Exactly what we put in. 
20.1 so it's exactly there's, there's no point of weighing this this has basically no retention all right so there you go retention on the k plus non-existent okay this is still all nice and warm we're gonna rinse the filter let's do a little fold These are just Hario V60 regular, you know, run of the mill filters, nothing special. All right, give it a nice rinse. Let's dump the water out. Okay. Okay, let's distribute this in here a little bit. Make our divot. Make sure we're at zero. Start the time. Okay, do our first 100 grams right from the middle. Go all the way up, then around the sides. Try to saturate everything evenly. Okay, so this process is going quite fast. Let's get right into our second pour. Again, go around the sides. Wash everything down. 200, a little agitation, okay now we wait, okay this coffee is still quite fresh because I'm getting a lot of, I did get a lot of CO2. So we're not even two minutes in, I might do some little bit more agitation now on my third pour, slow it down a little bit more, but again you see with this, you do the agitation and it doesn't slow down nowhere near as much. Okay, let's do our third pour. Okay, wash everything off the sides. Now let's get it up to 300 grams. Okay. A couple grams over, not a big deal. I'm gonna do a little more agitation. Okay, so our final drawdown, we still have a little bit of water in there and we are at three, so getting to 315. Okay, it might be very similar. It might end up very similar. 320, still trickling. Now again, on this one I did agitation twice to kind of slow it down a bit because I mean, we were definitely gonna finish faster. We're at 335, and it's about to hit bottom there. There you see it drying out. I think this one maybe went just a tad little bit longer. We're calling it at 350. And now it's dry on top. Nice flat bed. Again, this is what you want to get. There's a lot less coffee stuck to the sides with this one. I don't know what that's about. Um, I don't know, maybe it is the fines. Again, on the other one, that the fines are kind of sticking to the wall. Here you could see where it just all got washed. It all went down, you know? All right, so this one took about a few seconds longer, but we're still way within, within you know, the, my parameters of what I wanted to achieve, so let's taste it. All right, guys, can't wait to try this. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to taste any kind of difference. So I got the K plus here on my right. This is the one from the Breville Smart Grinder. So let's give them both a stir. Okay, the outside of the mugs, temperature is exactly the same. To be expected. We'll see the content. Okay, so. K plus. Okay, I'm very familiar. <laughs> the smart grinder. All right. Okay. The content, this one is a little bit cooler. 
than this one. This one's a little bit warmer. This is the one I just brewed, the K+. Plus. Not by a lot, okay, it's close. However, there seems to be a small difference here, okay? <laughs> I think there is a small difference. I don't know how much I can, uh, maybe the temperature difference could have something to do with that. You know what, I'm gonna put this one back into the, little, into the hot water. I'm gonna let this one cool a little bit until they're a lot closer. And I'll get back with you guys in a couple minutes. Okay, so I put the smart grinder not the smart grinder, but the coffee from the smart grinder back into the hot water. This one's been cooling for a couple minutes. Right now, they're really, really close as far as temperature. Let's give it another taste test. So this is the smart grinder. Okay. And here we go with the K+. Okay, now this one's, this one's a little tiny bit hotter than this one. I don't think they'll ever be exactly the same, guys. But this is really close, really, really close. Okay. Once again, I don't think I can tell any difference. I think the very first try is because of the difference in temperature. Um, there was somewhat small difference, but right now the temperature is so close. I don't think I can see that anymore. It's just, let, let's, <laughs> let's try again. Okay, one thing I could say, this coffee has more body, a little bit more thickness. Again, due to the fines, due to the fines. But now, if you account for the fines and you adjust accordingly so that your brew time is very close, okay, and you're using the same temperature water, I don't think the grinder is gonna make a huge difference it might make a very tiny, small difference. And we're talking just about flavor, okay? We're talking about flavor, not about, you know, ease of use and all the other things that we always, we always mention. As far as flavor, your average consumer, you give them these two cups blind taste test, and you might, if you know a lot about coffee, you might be able to pick out that this one, it's a little bit, has a little bit more body, a little bit thicker, the consistency is a, a little bit, tiny little bit different where it's a little noticeable, but as flavor, wow. All right, let's go again. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's people out there that could definitely tell the difference. I, I can't. You give me these two cups, I'll say they're the same. <laughs> they're exactly the same. There is a little bit uh, difference as to the mouthfeel and the body. As far as the flavor, the taste, they're both wonderful. Okay, they're both wonderful. Right now, it's not very high acidity right now. If you wanted to bring that acidity up, you might want to get it closer to the three minutes. Right now, I think this one was like 340 and this one was like 330, somewhere around there. They're very close in the timing and it's, the coffee's already getting sweeter. There's still a little bit of acidity in there, not a lot. It's wonderful. This is a great cup of coffee. I'll be happy with this in the morning, any day of the week, okay? So I think your average consumer would not be able to taste any difference between the two grinders. I just don't see it. Comment below, let me know. Can you guys easily, I mean, am I the only one? <laughs> I 
I see people doing this kind of test on other uh, coffee channels and they're like, oh yeah, this one is like way like, how, how do, I don't know. Can <laughs> I know there's people that could do it. Cause if you watch that James Hoffman video, he picks them out like quick, you know, he can really, you know, but I think at best it's a very subtle difference. With a very well-developed palette, maybe there's enough of a difference here to kind of push you to get one grinder or the other. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But we're talking about the K Plus is a it's a pretty high level hand grinder, okay? It's it's up there. It's it's a very good one. The Breville Smart Grinder Pro is just very run of the mill entry level as entry as you could get as far as getting a coffee grinder that can grind for espresso and for pour over is very entry level, okay? So you're comparing like a, something that's kind of high end to something very entry level run of the mill and it's still super close, super close. I, <laughs> Look, I don't know, comment below, let me know. Did I do something wrong? Can I do something here that I'll be able to really taste like a big difference? This is subtle at best, okay? So it's very close. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy the rest of these coffees. I hope I was able to keep you company for a little while. Um, as espresso, they, both grinders work very well. The K Plus is a pleasure to use. If I had to pick one or the other, I get the K Plus just because of the ease of use, just because there's no noise. Uh, you know, yes, you gotta do the hand grinding, but I just love using it. If you're gonna brew a whole bunch of coffees, you gotta brew like, let's say five, six coffees in the morning for your whole family or something like that, then yeah, then I will get the Bravo Smart Grinder. Cause just, 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 I'm not gonna be doing that much grinding every morning, okay? But for the, the way that I use them, where I make one or two brews in the morning, you know, in the afternoons, I might make one or two brews in the afternoon. I'm perfectly okay with the hand grinder. I love using it. The thing is bulletproof. It's made like a tank. You won't have any problems. It's, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. But if you gotta brew a whole bunch of coffees, then at that point, man, just, <laughs> it's gonna get a little overwhelming. Get yourself, the Breville Smart Grinder and you know, as far as how long you can keep it going, making a bunch of coffees every day, I don't know if it's gonna last that long, I, I, I don't know. But for me, I've had it for a few years now and it, it really hasn't given too many problems. You guys have seen my struggles with it. I have it here on the channel. The, the couple times that I had problems with it, it's been twice in like four years or, so you just clean it, do a deep, deep cleaning, get, all the, get it all degunked and then it should start working again for you just fine. So that's what I have to say about it. I don't know what else. Uh, Carrie, again, thank you for the suggestion on that coffee. I enjoyed it a whole bunch. And again, our workflow is just way too different. <laughs> it's way too different to be able to, uh, for me to try to get exactly what you're tasting. I do say it was a, a great coffee. I have the two coffees coming in from Sight Glass, the ones that Andrew recommended, that's coming in. Well, probably that's gonna be the next video. We're gonna be playing with those coffees. It might be a morning brew. I don't think I could wait all the way till the weekend. I think I'm gonna receive them on Monday. So I don't think I'll wait until Saturday to try them out. Maybe we'll do a morning brew. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, maybe by Wednesday or Thursday, I'll have them and I'll be able to, to try them out for you guys and open those bags and taste it. So Andrew, thank you for the suggestion for sight glass and um, we're gonna be playing around with those coffees. Uh, Carrie, once again, thank you. Joan, thank you for your comments as always. I haven't heard from Jesse in a while. Jesse, I hope you're doing well and you're enjoying the, the coffee videos. Anyway, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, thank you for all the likes and comments and welcome to all the new people that have been subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you guys. Um, I hope you guys are brewing something tasty. I'll see you guys next week.